Hey YouTube, I'm back with another deck profile video. Now we finally come to the last Bermuda Triangle uh, deck that I wanted to unveil. This one being my favorite Bermuda Triangle deck of all time. Uh, Velvet Voice Reindeer, or now with the new Peaceful Voice Reindeer. So Reindeer, technical, like one of the best uh, Bermuda Triangle decks from back in the day with the original release and debut of the clan, the Banquet of Divas. So. Back then, there were three decks. There was Riviere, Pacifica. Those two were the more, like, I guess the premier decks because they had the hollows. And then the third one, being the budget-oriented one, was Velvet Voice Reindeer. So, we're going to get into the deck here. This is one of the few decks that runs a 10k Vanguard, being the original. So, I have this one. So, four Velvet Voice Reindeer and four Peaceful Voice Reindeer. So, Peaceful Voice Reindeer basically gives Reindeer a semi restand style ability. Uh, or basically what happens is if she's on the Rear Circle, so let's say you ride your 10k Reindeer and you don't want to be on 10k, you can call this down as a Rear Guard to fight. At the end of the battle, that your drive check revealed a card with Reindeer in the name. So if you drive check a reindeer, uh, you if this unit is standing, you may pay the cost. If you do, move this unit to V, and this unit gets minus one drive. So it's kind of like a semi restand. It's kind of, it gives it like a spectral duke sort of thing, or even like a, a a lesser laurel sort of play style. That's the way I think of it. But um, I like it when you and when and its vanguard effect is when your drive check reveals a grade three. Choose a card for your hand, put it in the soul, uh, and uh, basically if you do that, you choose one of your rear guards, return it, and if there is a card named Velvet Voice Reindeer in your soul or trigger zone, so if you drive check this, for instance, and there's, it, it can either you drive check it, it's trigger zone, or there's one in the soul, uh, she gets plus one drive, so she can become a triple drive as Vanguard, or she can become a single drive um, if you move her on the Vanguard Circle after she attacks, so three either three drive checks on that turn or four three three drive checks with uh, her other skills. And what I like about it is none of this is limit break, none of it is GB one or two, none of that stuff. So it's old school style. So everything is unlocked. Uh, it's like having cheat codes unlocked. Just straight up, everything just goes. So. I like what they did. I think it's an excellent uh, addition to the deck. It does revive it and breathe much needed life into it. It would have been nice if they also got a stride unit, but whatever they can make do with the four Olivia's, and that works fine. Next for grade twos, we run four Inspect Sisters Robel. Uh, Robel is really good. So basically, this deck is a lot like the Dimensional Robo Dikaiser style deck, where this is when this is in the trigger zone. If you have a Ranger Vanguard. This becomes a grade three essentially, so you then it'll activate this skill, uh, and it can also potentially activate her other skill um, if you have a velvet voice in the soul. So works really well. It also has a really decent effect of when this unit's attack hits a vanguard, it can pressure the vanguard because when it hits, if you vanguard with reindeer, you can draw a card, shuffle your deck. Basically, she'll soul bless one, she goes to the bottom. And then you draw a card. So, very good. Definitely a four of next. Four of a new, another new card that they got, So, but it uses Soul Blast as well. Uh, when this drive check reveals a grade three, or when your drive check reveals a grade three, this is a rare card effect only. Um, you can Soul Blast one, and you have a Vanguard with Ranger, of course. Um, if you do, choose a card for your hand, call to an open R, and that unit gets plus 2k. So, Potentially, it can call down something like, like this and make it an 11. Um, but yeah, the only problem with the deck I feel is that oh, the other thing is when that happens, that unit and this unit gets 2k. So this could potentially be your 11k when you drive check a grade three. So just because of that, the requirement of drop checking grade threes, it's kind of like it's one of those decks that's very trigger happy. Like it turns a lot of the cards into additional triggers. Um, because back in the day, the way I look at it is her original style skill, uh, when she reveals a grade 3, when the drive check reveals a grade 3, essentially what it does 
is it basically makes the grade threes in the deck like a stand trigger. Uh, that's essentially what it does. And then with this one, it makes the grade threes give you an extra drive check potentially. So all the grade threes become triggers in addition to your 16 normal triggers. Um, so that's very nice actually. Next, three Girls Rock Rio. Girls Rock Rio, in my opinion, is one of the best cards to run in here. Uh, even though she's an 8k body, she's not GB1 restricted like uh, Amelia. And on top of that, she soul charges one and draws a card. So she soul charges, and that's really important in here because uh, Lapla is soul blasting. Um, so we kind of counteract it with that. So she's replenishing your hand when she, every time she's bounced. She counter blasts one. Soul Charge and Draw, really old school card, works very good uh, with Ranger. It always worked really good with Ranger. People who remember the original deck from way back in the day, um, I still have that video somewhere. It's I was running like four Rio and I and I had four Reindeer and four Karine. Karine's not needed anymore because the new card replaced her, um, but Rio still has her spot in here in my opinion. It does give you that draw engine. For Grade Ones, four of the original Mermaid Idol Ellie. Uh, you can run this or you can run the unflip. Um, I like to run Ellie because Ellie can protect my rear guards and stop annoying, uh, like, the cross and stuff. Although then the cross might potentially try to, like, blow up my field. But it does stop Laurel and annoying stuff like that. Uh, next, four Dash Sisters Rabel. Or Rabel. Um, this is another grade 3 when it drive check you of Reindeer Vanguard. So, uh, the, essentially it has the same style skill as this card. I think this is like a Legion type art. Um, but basically, it has the same thing of this. But the only difference is when your drive check reveals a grade 3. This one it has the hit and you have to have a Reindeer Vanguard to Soul Blast, put it on the bottom, and then draw a card. This one... Basically, it goes on the bottom and it draws your card and it unflips one damage. So this is the unflip. This soul blasts, but whatever. They're both really essential to the deck because of the trigger zone skill. Um, and this is something that I can see Bushy Road trying to work with in the future. Uh, more like trigger zone, although I feel like they need to be really careful doing that because essentially they'll be turning more cards into the deck into triggers. So I think it works in it works in, in decks like this where you want to drive check a certain grade. Um, so yeah, I feel like they need to be a little bit careful they want to add that, but I can see them I can see them potentially making more like this trigger zone style. Uh, making stuff happen in the trigger zone more as a, because they're starting to do it with bind zone, so it's just another way to try to innovate within the game. Next four piping hot. Uh, Soifa. So Soifa is really good. Um, some people only run like three of it, but I really feel like four of it is ideal. Um, essentially what she does is she's like that one card that the Royal Paladins got for Alfred, uh, where when she's behind Velvet Voice Ranger, which is the 10k, as we all know, she makes the, she makes her opponent 11k as long as she's behind her or in the same column as her. And this applies also if she, if they're in the rear guard lane. Like, if they're in a rear guard column, then this is an 11k rear guard, so you can swing 11th the vanguard and stuff like that, so. And then, when she's in the back row, she essentially, I feel like she's very similar to Melem in Gear Chronicle. Um, basically, when she's in the back row, and let's say she's in the back row where she's not behind the vanguard, uh, if your drive check reveals a grade 3, if you have a vanguard with reindeer, um, until the end of the battle... Or at the end of the battle, no, until the end of the battle, uh, she can, at the end of the battle, move this to an open R in the same column, and she gets 4K, making her like Melon, where she's like she's swing 11 as a grade 1. Um, so, really good in this deck overall. I really do like the, the rear guard support cards that they uh, made for the deck. And then finally, I am running two Sedna. I decided it's either going to be Sedna or it's going to be the Stride Enabler. Ultimately, I went with Sedna, mainly because Reindeer is 10k Vanguard. Uh, I want to be able to 10k block early if I have to, if I have to ride Sedna, for example. Um, and also because Sedna and Rio can make 16k columns. So I wanted, I wanted, I didn't want Rio to be like a dead 
uh, 8K that can't really do anything. It can't swing to a rear guard in front of it. It can't pressure the Vanguard in any way. Um, so I, went, I ran Sedna that way. And also because, because the other thing is, like, people will say, well, you're still better off striding. Um, that's true, but again, like, the deck is so, uh, like, fast in the early game. I feel like because I don't have GB1 problems, I don't have to worry about getting the first stride. I can essentially rush the opponent down as much as I can early. And really, I feel like that's where these sort of decks really shine. It's in the early game, in the mid game, is where they're at their strongest. Later on, you're eventually going to get those grade threes. You're eventually going to be able to bring out Olivia and do those plays. So I feel like uh, it's kind of a minor point. Especially considering the trigger lineup. So just like with Coral, this deck does run 12 critical. Any time I tell someone, when they ask the trigger lineup in a casual match, I'll just tell them, oh, by the way, I'm running 12 crit. Then when I run 12 crit, they're scared of the deck. So it's like, I'm amazed at how intimidating 12 crits are to so many players. And they feel like it's unfair, and they feel like Bushy Road should ban it and make it only like 8 crit max. I feel like it's a ridiculous argument. 12 crits away to go with Reindeer. You want, you have Rio to draw you your cards. Uh, you have your stride, you have your triple drive checks, you have all that kind of stuff. So why not run 12 crit and keep up with the best? Um, and again, that's another reason why I don't really need the stride enabler, because I can potentially block 10 early with 8k set in a vanguard, and I can make 16k all, all game with relative ease like that. And then with 12 crit pressure, that's with 16k easy and 11k everywhere. It's kind of, you know, scary. Um, so yeah, 12 crit is the way to go in the reindeer build. It always has. Uh, in the olden days, people used to run some stand triggers in there. Uh, you can try the harmony ones if you want. And then if you want to tech in like a couple of harmony, like maybe a potpourri or something. And uh, whatever, Anya and maybe the stand with harmony that goes in the soul and does stuff you could try that out that could potentially give you the ability to run like these cards um but for my build i went with just what i'm running old school no gb1 restrictions anywhere um so the starter is the new colorful smiling frat or fray freight she's meant for uh, reindeer because at the end of the battle that she boosted if she vanguard with reindeer you can counter blast one, put her into soul, choose up to one of your rear guards, bounce it up, choose two cards from your hand, and call them separate R. So very good with this with this deck. Uh, one thing I will note, um, I feel like it's ideal to some most of the time call her out to a rear guard column as opposed to behind the vanguard because usually you want to put a soifa behind her, especially if you open up with uh, the original reindeer. That's one thing I just wanted to point out. For the stride deck, it's for Olivia, because you make this deck as strong as you can by running for Olivia and 12 crit. It works, it just straight up wins games. One El Prina, it works really well because we run Rios in here. Um, you can reset your columns, put Sednas in different parts of the field. One Somni, get extra attacks. Uh, Amoris, same as El Prina, only if your board's already set up, you can use this instead to save you a Soul Blast. One Madu, because we do run uh, Reindeer, 10k Vanguard, so essentially Stride for free. Uh, let's say you have Reindeer, you have one of these in the drop zone because they were in the damage zone, you healed one, uh, and then you have one of these to Stride. So you can drop this with Madu, go into Madu, and then fetch this card from the drop zone. So, you know, it fixes stuff. So it works really well in here. One Blizza, because why not? We run 12 crit in late game. After you stride Olivia the second time, you just close it out with this. One Seabreeze, because I have space for it. Um, because, yeah, typically it's, you know, you don't run stride enabler, so you're not going to stride too much. Usually, it's going to be Olivia um, and one of these, and, or if I'm running my 10k, then I may go into Madu, but it's kind of rare still for me. But Seabreeze, for any of those weird decks where they kind of like, for example, um, Brutal Jack, Nova Grappler Rush, um, stuff like that could potentially be a problem for this deck. 
Um, but this deck doesn't really die easily to those decks because you just ride this and the deck is not shut down. It's not Limit Break, it's not Legion, it's not Stride, GB, whatever. So just you ride this, start going off like crazy. This starts going off. The whole deck is live with 12 crit, you know. So this isn't really all that necessary, but it's in here. You, otherwise, you can run Opmos in here or another Bermuda Triangle. Um, if you're running Harmony, obviously, you can run Loris. Uh, and then I am just running two Leona, two Nasha, one Desmal to protect my Girls Rock Rio, usually. And one Scryu because you need some big defense numbers in some certain situations. So anyway, guys, that was my Velvet Voice and Peaceful, Peaceful Velvet Voice Reindeer deck. Uh, probably this is going to be the main Bermuda Triangle deck that I stick with for a long time. Um, but let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the deck. And also let me know what's your favorite uh, Bermuda Triangle uh, deck out there, whether it's duos. And if it's duos, what type of duo? Is it Red? Is it Mirror? Is it Legion? Um, or any kind of combination? Or if it's Prisms, or if it's uh, Pacifica, Riviere, Reindeer, Coral. There's like so many different ones. Loris, Liddy, Spica even, you know. So let me know in the comments below. Or I guess I did I mention Coral. Coral. Um, let me know in the comments below what's your favorite Bermuda Triangle deck. And as always guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.